Hi, I'm Dr. Kit Weathers, and it's time for the Root Tip of the Week. But let's begin with the Illusion of the Week. Okay, we're going to talk about restoration of the endodontically treated tooth. I'm going to start out with the question, are endodontically treated teeth different? Before we answer that question, let me introduce my very special guest today, Dr. Vince Tiller. Vince is a co-director with me at the LVI Endodontic Root Camp. And Vince happens to be here taking a course from Dr. Ron Jackson. And I'm going to let him tell you what he's learned and how this applies to restoring the endodontically treated tooth. I was taught for years and believed for years that the dentin in the endodontic treated tooth is different than in other teeth. And we were told that it was brittle due to water loss and loss of collagen length. We'll show you. There's been some recent studies that say neither dehydration or endodontic treatment causes degradation of the physical or mechanical properties of dentin. It shows that fractures are caused by loss of structural integrity associated with access preps, and loss of significant tooth structure due to caries and existing restorations. So basically, they become weak because they've lost a lot of the structure, not because the, the actual tooth properties change. Access preparations result in increased cuspal um, deflection because we've taken the, the strength out of the middle of the tooth, and it can keep, increases the possibility of cusp fracture if these teeth are not restored with restorations that give cuspal protection. It also, we were taught for a long time that the pulp has no proprioceptive function and now we're beginning to see research that shows perhaps that it does. So you lose that. And I'm gonna cite you just a couple of studies to support this. There was a study of 46,000 patients showed more fractures of endodontically treated teeth. Another study of 1,273 showed that cuspal coverage is the only significant restorative variable for long-term success. A 10-year study of 680 teeth, this is a small study, reached the same conclusion. Nine-year study of 400 teeth showed endodontically treated teeth with cuspal protection are six times more likely to survive than those with intercoronal restorations. These are another one of my weird collections. These are teeth that People that came to me complaining about a problem with a tooth that had had a root no treatment. cuspal protection. You can see all of them had one thing in common. This is what happens. Surveys show that 50% of the posterior teeth treated endodontically in this country are restored with cuspal protection, full coverage. This means if only 50% are restored with that, the other half are not. And my question is why? Why indeed? Vince, would you mind answering that question for us? Well, I guess the answer really why is because we don't take the time or the effort to make sure the patient does what is good for them because the natural reaction, once the pain that caused the need for endodontics is gone, then the urgency to have the restoration done is gone. And then the other reason I think that we hesitate sometimes as doctors is because for so long we were told you had to do a crown on every tooth and we didn't like the idea. I never liked the idea of a full crown on a tooth that only had a minimal amount of decay and even though it was deep. So first of all, we learned that we could do onlays, especially with bonded porcelain now, uh, so that we preserve a lot of tooth. But then as we've worked in, uh, in the root camp, we have developed an, a more conservative access prep that gives us all the safety that we need for straight line access without cutting a giant hole in the tooth just to get in. So now we can, in certain instances, we show that if you have a, a minimal amount of tooth damage, then that cuspal protection be, can be afforded by the new bonding materials that we have instead of having to cut away a lot of tooth simply to have a crown. So tell us a little bit more about when we could avoid using a full crown. 
Well, Kit, basically it comes along to where we have a situation where we don't have a lot of carries, a gigantic restoration, basically a big hole that gave us access into do our endo. And I'll show you a couple of pictures here that illustrate it, and part of it's based on function. You can see this uh, lower first molar has had the endodontic treatment. We have a very conservative access prep. You can see that we have this occlusion dead solid right on the working cusp, right in the middle of the fossa. You can see on the second picture that we have good cuspal protection, so we're not torquing that tooth. So when you have a circumstance like that, then we feel like it's okay, if you look at this a little closer, to go ahead and, and repair this simply with an intracoronal bonded composite restoration. So we have a circumstance you can see there. We'll go a step further. Here's the final restoration. You can see the occlusion, you can see the final restoration, and the patient benefits from this because you've done a good job at a less of a cost. I'll show you one more similar situation. This tooth has had the endo, even though it did have a, a mesial involvement. This is still a very conservative situation, a lot of strong tooth, and we feel like it'd be wrong just to cut away tooth to follow that blind rule that you have to have cuspal or full coverage on this tooth. We're going to use a restoration here. This is a bonded bell glass inlay, which, which restores the tooth with strength where it needs strength. The bonding process holds the tooth together, and it gives you a really good result without sacrificing all that tooth structure. So this is the kind of thing or the circumstances where this is possible. Well, I'd like to thank Dr. Ben Stiller for dropping by today, and especially on Halloween. And I would also like to say thank you for watching this Root Tip of the Week. And we hope to see you at the next Root Camp.